Okay. So thank you all for coming and welcome to why dating apps are not working and what to do in that. And I am Kathy O'Connell and with me I have our trainer and counselor, Alexa Sindriplin. And let me tell you what we'll be covering in the, the next hour. And we'll try very hard to keep it to an hour. We want to be with some respectful of your time. We are going to talk about the three biggest and challenges people with disabilities are experiencing in dating and relationships, what's not working in dating, and what is working, the top dating problems people want to solve, the specific skills and supports that people want, and I got Go back to the tail side for a minute. Why we have this apps direct at the end of the tail. We will explain that. And Alexa, do you want to tell yeah. them about yourself? Yeah. So, hello, everyone. I'm a mental health counselor trainer at Radiant Abilities, and I specialize in dating, relationships, confidence, and self-esteem for people with disabilities, and really focus on how to help this population overcome ableism and um, just different issues surrounding disability, intimacy, and relationships. Okay, and that's it. Uh... Yeah, it's been very helpful to me. I'm Kathy kind of like own reading abilities in doing this research. And let me tell you, because actually that's the talk to most of the people on this research. And so many of you don't know who I am. But I'm Kathy O'Connell. I run Rating Abilities, which is, there's two major parts of what we do. Alexa and I are both some mental health and counselors with a specialty in working with people with disabilities. So we have the mental health and counseling side of things. And then we have training and support in the area of dating and relationships for people. Because 25 years ago, when I became a counselor, I began noticing how nearly everyone coming to me for counseling was experiencing such emotional pain about not having a partner, not being able to date, and feeling like their disability created too many barriers in dating and relationships. And more importantly, on the personal level, I myself with some born with cerebral palsy. And out of anything in my life, and I have done a lot, but dating and relationships was the biggest barrier for me. I had a long dating career, wasn't always very active, but I began my dating career when I was only 14, went out on a couple of dates, but I quickly realized that the boy who asked me out 
really did so because he thought I was safe because I had CP and he had CP. Well, even at 14, I knew I wanted something more for myself, but I wanted him to want something more for himself. So I I didn't really date in my teenage years. I got into my 20s. I had a serious relationship, even was engaged. Luckily, that did not work out because I know now it was not a good relationship. And I spent many years not dating because it was so hard. But I always had that dream, that desire to want to date, to want to share my life with someone. So I I did a lot of personal work on myself. And then this happened. I had the most awkward date of my life. Remember long dating career and by the same point in the career I was aware enough that if I didn't bring up the issue and me having a disability with my date I would never hear from him again. So on the particular day, I we had dinner, we get on the dessert, and I'd say, so, how are you doing with me having a disability? Big tears well up inside, run down his face, and he says, I'm just so uncomfortable. And I think I am never going on another day undone that's the way to art. But remember, I did some work on myself. So I knew in the incident that that thought would not help me. I took a deep breath. I remembered who I was. And I took a rest which is hard to do, as you know, when you're dating. And they said, well, you know what? CP is with me for life. Nothing I can do about that. And I know I can be a good partner to someone. And I would like to get to know you. And and spend time getting to know you. That was the, the real rest that I share my feelings. And he would sit sure we talked for a bit. And I said, hey, if you you think about it, you wanna get to know me, you call me. So I get in the car not having any idea if I would hear from him again. The next night, I checked my email, and he emailed me, well, uh, I'm not sure I can date someone with a disability. However, you are so confident in who you are. I don't need to get to know you. So we did begin to date, and things began to evolve. And me, remember, I was a counselor. So at, at the end of every day, I would say, how are you doing with the whole disability thing? And he would say, oh, I'm not sure. And then the very next breath, I'd say, so what are you doing next weekend? I knew we were going somewhere. And indeed we were because that man who was so uncom uncomfortable with me 
ended up being my husband. And what they taught me, of course, on a whole personal level, was that if I really worked on how I presented myself in terms of really owning my disability and my strengths, that they changed something that I had struggled with for years. And it led me to looking at how I could bring the focus of dating and relationships to my work with people with disabilities. And since then, I provide trainings, I had taught at Syracuse University on the synopsis. I created an online course in the 10 week at conferences. But the key thing that I want to get across is in that I believe I'm not a unicorn. I just believe that through my experience, I gained some knowledge and insight of what could be helpful to other people with disabilities. And I'm gonna turn it over for a few minutes into Alexa to talk about the research we did with people with disabilities, asking them about their experience with dating and relationships. Okay. So from September of 2022 to January of 2023, we spoke to overall 78 people with disabilities. And we'll talk a little bit more about what we learned, such as what's working in dating, what's not working, and resources that are used too. So we found that majority were in the 25 to 35 age range, followed by 35 to 44. And we interviewed individuals with a variety, with a wide range of disabilities, including cerebral palsy, spina bifida, cystic fibrosis, chronic um, pain, um, fibromyalgia, and muscular dystrophy. And then other disabilities that were reported included autism, traumatic brain injuries, intellectual disabilities, epilepsy, ADHD, along with um, dual diagnosis as well, um, such as PTSD, anxiety, and depression. Um, majority um, were employed and 37 reported that they were unemployed, but overall 65% ranked that dating and relationships were very important to them. But the three biggest challenges and barriers that they ran into um, was just dating in general, but being able to really connect with others socially, like finding places to meet people um, and just events, social events, and also their mental health, dealing with mental health challenges such as anxiety, depression, and having that be um, a challenge and a barrier that they have in dating and meeting new people. So we really wanted to know um, what's helpful and what resources they were using to really help them in dating and meeting people. Part of this research um, and why we did it is to really understand and provide, you know, resources as a company that works with people with disabilities in these areas um, that are helpful for them. And we found that the biggest resource that people used were dating apps. But only 48% of those who use dating apps um, found them helpful. So uh, that's the end of the about to give people a book. So that uh, if I remember correctly, it was about half of the people we interviewed who actually used the dating apps. 
So only half for those who we all find it helpful. So a quarter of the overall people mm -hmm. we interview. Mm -hmm. And after, you know, trying to figure out, you know, why they were unhelpful, uh, people reported that they just didn't, you know, they weren't finding success on dating apps um, or not having any progress. And also they ran into some safety issues with, you know, matching with scammers and just meeting people that were unsafe. But also on the dating apps, there's lack of support and in, um, in dating and relationships. So that was another issue. So aside from dating apps, people also reported um, going to counseling and receiving advice from expert, experts in the field, um, going to support groups and doing personal development to try to get results in dating and relationships. But what was working the most is personal development. So really working on themselves, um, trying to, you know, do self-care and really focus on themselves and feeling more confident in themselves before putting themselves out in the dating scene has really helped. Um, and this was successful because um, people learned skills, um, they were seeing results, and they gained insight. Um, they realized that focusing on themselves before jumping into the dating scene and, you know, getting a partner was more helpful. So really focusing on their personal development was got them the results they wanted. And then that time you're brought in again and say that these are exactly what worked for me personally that I shared in my stories and that it was the skills and insights I got from my own personal development that led to getting the result I did on that day when I met my husband. So here are some questions and issues that uh, people wanted to address through various resources, um, but people really wanted to learn communication skills, how to meet new people, how to navigate disability relationship, um, dis disability related issues in a relationship. Um, how to disclose their disability and problem solve, but also learn about sex and intimacy and how to have those conversations um, in relationships. But the skills that participants wanted to address the most were communication skills, followed by working on their confidence and self-esteem, and also disclosing their disability to dates and partners. And that's a new and windy that's close, yeah. which is a, a big issue. Yes, yes. And overall, people were really looking for resources that um, include coaching, support groups. Um, a lot of people wanted a, a group where they can meet with individuals that are experiencing the same issues, um, but also a class, something that's hands-on and um given by a professional in the field who has lived experience. Now, we want to explain why the apps directed some there in the title that what to do in some that <laughs> dating apps you may refer to them as a necessary evil, but they continue to be one of the easiest ways to meet people. It's eventually your day because what a lot of people with or without disabilities, it's a variant at a certain point in adulthood is that many of their friends can be married or partnered or raising families and they don't have as many social opportunities to meet 
other people who are looking to date. So the dating apps and do remain one of the easiest ways to meet people. And again, it's that we that we don't always meet available people in our circle. <coughs> Thank you, and take a sip. But <coughs> what we found from the research is that with the right support and skills, <laughs> people can be susceptible on dating apps. Let's take a you think you have a very quick set before I get the car. Of course. So dating apps are not for everyone. Um the chal oh <laughs> the challenge and skills people are really looking for to find success are more universal. So it's really hard and challenging to really put yourself out there. It feels very vulnerable to face rejection. So that, <laughs> oh wait, once I, there we go. So that's why we created Dating Made Easier, um, which is a monthly membership that teaches dating and relationship skills, specifically um, focused on the areas of increasing dating self-esteem, growing confidence, and learning skills to really maintain um, authentic relationships. So we um, think it's really important here at Radiant Abilities to start off, um, we believe the foundation is feeling confident and good in yourself before beginning a relationship. So we focus a lot on um, increasing dating self-esteem and we do this by teaching members how to identify their power to attract um, the dating experiences and relationships that they want. Um, yeah. And I think I have recovered from that little tip <laughs> on my throat, so thank you for that. So, yes. Um, I want to briefly explain what we mean by the power to attract because we feel that it's a, a key to what we teach in dating and relationships, and that it's in the ability to focus on what it is and that is attractive about you and use that as your focal point for getting the relationships you want because that's the thing that for all people, <laughs> but particularly people with disabilities, we get a lot of messages, overt, covert messages about not being attractive or focusing on your weaknesses. We are put that and teaching people how to focus on what is attractive about them. We also want to help people grow their dating confidence and develop some specific skills in being confident going into the dating arena and developing healthy relationships. We want, I always say this, I don't want people to just get dating. I want people to nurture and grow healthy, joyful relationships. So we teach you some girls in dating maybe there to help you with your communication, which is a big area that people said they feel they need support on problem solving and being authentic in your relationships. Uh, to give you a look inside a membership, because you may be thinking, what 
exactly is involved in the dating membership. Every month you get a new workshop on a training, a dating skill, or a dating issue, such as how and when to disclose your disability. We provide you a monthly brainstorming session to work through the dating issues you're dealing with. Every month you get new resources that will guide you on a new component of dating that maybe you never thought about. And we also offer networking meetings because what we heard is people really want support from other people going through the dating and relationship process. And what we do is we record everything because we know to get you all over the place and we record everything so that you don't need to attend live and you can watch in the recordings on demand. You also have access to Alexa and myself to ask any questions, a Facebook group, and like I said, the library of recorded content. We have the link there if you're interested in and want to check it out. Alexa, will you put the link in the chat? Just yes. Easy. Um, the cost is $29 a month or $290 annually, then you get two months free. Um, and I don't know if anyone is in, from New York here, but it, we have a range here in New York where we are that people in self-directed funding can get reimbursed for the cuts of the membership. Um, and we also have an option for people to upgrade any particular month if you feel you need more individual support um, in doing a dating plan or going over your dating profile or reviewing your matches, whatever that may be. Um, but we did this and we want to offer it the lowest and possible cost we could because the research we did suggests that it's very challenging to date with a disability and to get those results that you're looking for to make those meaningful connections and through talking to people, what we can clear is that people want and need consistent support and resources. You know, there's a ton out there on disability and sexuality these and days. I feel that there's much less out there in terms of the social and emotional factors of dating with a disability or any significant difference and how to successfully navigate that in the dating scene. And I did some <laughs> address in the obvious because we all experience this 
but I don't have the time or money. And it would be something you're thinking. I would just encourage you that would a little bit of money be worth it to help you feel more confident and get real support because you'll see that you'll it when you join the membership you have three times the month that you can get live group support and the resources that you've been longing for for that relationship that you want. And for many of you, maybe you're already paying for a dating app. I know that I have talked to a lot of people who say, oh my gosh, I have paid so much and for a dating app, but I got nothing out of it. So to just bring that into the picture, it permits something that you're thinking may be beneficial to you. I am going to take the green shot down and in one second so we can answer any questions or comments. But I will also share that for anyone who signs up within a week, we are giving a free one-on-one -on -one consulting um, when you join the membership. It's something that it's up to you. And I will just put our contact information up there briefly. Um, but I do want to take the slides off and ask if there are any questions or comments, anything surprise you, anything you want to do, go back and we can pull up and, and got some more detail. Uh, this is Kaz, I have a question. Sure. Um, so I was one of the people that Alexa interviewed and mm -hmm. I shared um, a post on my social media for people mm -hmm. to get more people to come in. And you, um, I can't say we were so grateful for you because we had several people. Oh, you're very yes. awesome. Yes, oh. Kaz, you're so grateful for that. I remember <laughs> um, it was like Monday, like six o'clock in the morning, and I woke up to like 12 new scheduled interviews. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, this is wonderful. So we are very thankful um, for that. And we really appreciated that, Kaz. Um, you're welcome. Um, so I don't know if you, um, read the comments on my social media share, but there was some concern from people. What was the purpose of the study? What was going to be used with the data? Why were participants not being paid? And I'm wondering if the, I think you said there were 78 interviewees, mm -hmm. will they get like a free month? or a free one-on-one -on -one consult? Like, will they get something for the, their time and experience that they put toward this project? Sure, you know, we, we'd be happy to give everyone a free month. We, we have offered that to people, but if you have people specifically who would like to take advantage of that, we would love to add them. Um, thank you. Yeah, I'm not actually on social media anymore, um, but um, it's more of a, you know, if, if you, if you re are reaching out to the people you interviewed and offering that, I was just curious because 
there were a lot of questions and I couldn't answer them. I didn't have the answers. So yeah. I was just wondering yeah. if you have a, if you have something in place for that. Sure. Yeah, we do. And, and people can definitely can get that. And I will let people know about that also. That's really great. Thank you so much for doing that. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay. Well, I really appreciate your time that you've set aside to hear about our research and what we're trying to do to solve the concerns and the problems and that people brought to our attention. So thank you for attending and feel free to reach out to either of us it when we can answer any other questions. Yeah. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for having this informational session. This has been really great. Thank you. Of course. You're welcome. Take care, kids, and take care, Suzanne. You too. Have a good afternoon. You too. You too.